Good morning, church family. I hope all are well this morning. I'd like to talk to you for just a few minutes about the subject of freedom. We have been blessed above all the world in the fact that we are living in a country that enjoys freedom more prevalent and more expansive than anywhere under any time period. Those freedoms that we have had the privilege to enjoy can be used properly or we see that they can also be used improperly. We are at this time experiencing a period where there's a lot of examples of how freedom is being misused. And not to be political about this, but to understand that freedom in order to be a true blessing, has to be laid out and has to have parameters. And for us to violate those parameters, which causes us to violate the freedoms of others, is a misuse of those freedoms. We also look in our spiritual life and look in the scripture, and not only have we been blessed universally within our physical life, the sacrifice that Christ has made for us has given us a freedom that is far beyond any physical freedoms that we enjoy. But just as the freedoms in the world can be used properly and misused, they can also be misused in the scriptural sense. I'd like to read a passage here that... Uh, Paul lays out in the book of Galatians, starting with verse 13, which talks about that freedom and the improper use and the proper use of it. Starting in verse 13, you, my brothers and sisters, are called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, rather serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who being belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. So we see here that it's obviously it's obvious that our freedom can be misused, mishandled, and misdirected. And we are warned against that misdirection. The, the uh, freedom of the flesh and the freedom of the spirit are at odds with each other. They're in total conflict with each other. If you live in obedience to and adherence to the freedoms of the flesh, you're not doing so 
by the freedom of the Spirit. So we need to be cautioning ourselves as we go from day to day and as we think about and are thankful for the freedoms that we have in our physical life and now thinking about the freedoms that we have in our spiritual life, Christ has set us free. Not free to do whatever we wish, not free to do whatever the flesh desires, but free to be in the Spirit, to obey Him and receive the blessings that we do by following those freedoms. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. And we look forward to talking with you next time. Goodbye.